What's up guys, Dan here for BladeReviews.com, back again with another knife review. This time around I've got something very special, the Spyderco Rubicon, which is a collaboration with custom maker Peter Carey, modeled after his custom Rubicon flipper. I have mine here next to a couple other Spydercos, the Sage 1 and the Domino, and I thought that that might make for a nice size comparison seeing how the Rubicon has an overall length of 7.5 inches, a 3 inch blade, and a weight of 4.2 ounces. So, conceivably, this is something that you could EDC if you could bring yourself to carry it. What a beautiful piece for me. Frankly, it's more of a collectible. I have used it a little bit. I have carried it very, very gingerly, but uh, for myself, it was purchased as more of a collectible than a user piece. I prefer the Domino and uh, the Sage if I need a knife to beat up on. But let's take a close look at the blade here. Let's get into the review. Uh, what a nice, beautiful double hollow ground blade. I would say this is a modified drop point of some sort. Some folks have uh, called this a spear point. Doesn't really matter either way. You've got the hollow ground swedge and of course the hollow ground primary bevel and a nice satin finish all around. I like how the flats have been given a horizontal satin finish which gives it almost a, a hand rub kind of look, maybe a nod to the custom knife making world there. Beautiful blade, deep glossy hollow grind. Uh, this blade steel is CPM S30V, which is a fine steel. These days, you know, there's more exotic stuff out there, but frankly, I uh, would never push this to the limits of CPM S30V, let alone a, a super duper steel, so it's fine for my purposes. It has done a good job cutting open boxes and paper and stuff like that. That's about as far as I've pushed it. So but nice lean grind that uh, recurve can be kind of a pain in the ass to sharpen but it does feed material into the the belly of the blade and, and should help with slicing uh, I've found that to be true with other recurved blades so that's the blade let's move on to the handle which is the star of the show in my opinion it is a very tightly woven 100 percent genuine carbon fiber handle at least the scales are uh, over titanium liners, G10 backspacer, but this carbon fiber is basically like nothing else I've seen on a production knife. Really, really well done. It has been 3D finished, so it's contoured and uh, polished, and it's just wonderful. In natural light, it kind of shimmers, and you uh, really see the depth and character to the carbon fiber. There are no voids, no pinholes, no pockets, nothing like that. This is probably the nicest carbon fiber I've seen, again, on a production folder. Here it is next to the CT0562. Beautiful carbon fiber handles, but doesn't hold a candle to this Rubicon. Also, you've got this beautiful G10 orange pivot collar, and it has been seamlessly executed here. You cannot... I can't feel a gap, a crack, or anything like that. So uh, just wonderfully executed. And the pivot hardware itself is really nice. Uh, I sound a little bit like a broken record here, but nicest pivot hardware I've seen on a production folder. Really cool. So beautiful details. The backspacer is also another interesting detail here. Carved orange G10. Uh, personally, I'm not a very flashy guy, so the whole orange... G10 and black carbon fiber thing didn't really light my fire, so to speak. It, it has kind of a boy racer look to it, which isn't so much my shtick, but um, I can see why they did it. It's definitely unique, definitely catches the eye and says, hey, this is something different. And uh, it's something different, that's for sure. It's been beautifully executed. So, so there's that, you know, even if the... Uh, if the orange isn't quite your taste, I can safely say that it's been well done at least. Let's talk briefly about the ergonomics of this knife. Those 3D uh, machine handles there, they're really comfortable. Fills the hand nicely. You've got a run of sort of wide, flat jimping here, 
which is perfect, indexes the thumb nicely. Again, I haven't done a ton of work with this. I can't say I've like skinned a deer with this thing or anything like that, but for my light duty purposes, extremely comfortable, good performer, not just a good looker. So, also you do have full titanium handle, or excuse me, full titanium liners, and they have been milled out to lighten the load a little bit. And then I feels very lightweight for its size, actually. Let's talk a bit about the pocket clip, which is, frankly, a little bit of a disappointment when you consider how epic the rest of the knife is. It's just a simple stamped titanium clip. It's uh, mounted kind of high. You know, the uh, a fair amount of the knife still sticks out of the pocket, so it's not a particularly deep carry clip. It does remain faithful to Mr. Carey's custom offerings. He does offer them with similar clips to this, but it's just a little blah, I guess, in comparison with the rest of the knife, with the beautiful handles and all of that. I know that, uh, despite what some people think, Spyderco probably did have a budget in mind when they released this, and I'm sure doing a 3D machined pocket clip, A, they've, they'd never have done that before, I don't think, and B, it probably would have just blown the price right out of the water, so... Um, it was a you know a good place to compromise probably, but uh, I'll still complain about it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the deployment and lockup. Being a spider co, of course, you can always just flick it open with the thumb hole, and um, pleased to report that it works great in that capacity. I know you guys are going to be more interested in the flipping action. You've got a little bit of jimping here, and the knife flips very well, captures the skin of your uh, your pointer finger, and the blade flies out. It's not a super, super hard detent. I mean, again, if you're going to compare it to, say, this 562, it's a much stronger detent. It comes out much more authoritatively. But the Rubicon, it flips well, and I think it benefits from very smart design. The way that flipper tab's presented, it lets you get some good leverage on the knife, so um, it's a success as far as flipping goes. Also, it's riding on a caged bearing system. Very nice, very smooth. So it flips well. For lockup, you have this titanium liner lock. It's a very thick liner. You can see mine engages fully. Uh, also, I have to report that there is a little bit of lock stick here. Let's see if you can hear this. So you can probably hear that does have a little bit of stick. It has kind of gone away a little bit since I've uh, purchased the knife and received it, but it still is a little bit sticky, so I wanted to report that. Also, it can be a touch difficult to get at this uh, liner lock here. You know, you got to get the meat of your thumb in there. There's not really a, uh, a strong relief or cutout for your thumb. I noticed that the original Rubicon, the custom version, is also like that. So I suspect it's the way the knife has been designed, but I figured I would point it out. Personally, I like the liner lock just because it allows you to get a second helping of this beautiful carbon fiber handle, which again is my favorite feature of the knife. I think Spyderco has a lot of frame locks and even now some frame lock flippers, so this was a good, a good addition here. I'm not complaining at all about this being a liner lock knife, and I think that's pretty stupid if you are, so it's a, it's a beautiful knife. Okay, so let's talk final thoughts with the Spyderco Rubicon. I've put it down next to my Domino again, and uh, thinking about the Rubicon, it's a tremendous knife, really, really nice, beautifully executed, has some amazing details to it. I couldn't find much in the way of complaints most notably the lock is a little bit sticky. The pocket clip is kind of plain and you know we can always complain about pocket clips but beyond that it's unlike any kind of Spyderco I've ever handled before just a, a notch above in terms of quality, fit and finish, uh, craftsmanship, materials. That carbon fiber handle with the pivot collars like nothing else I've ever seen on a production knife so it's it's just tremendous frankly. Um, that said, it's an expensive knife at $300, no doubt, and that's going to turn a lot of people off. And I think that while uh, it's a valid criticism that it's expensive, I do think you're getting something extra for your money here when I've compared it to $200 knives. Uh, there's just, uh, 
extra work put into the Rubicon that you're not going to find on a cheaper knife. So practically speaking, it's not going to do anything, but if you're looking for uh, a collector's piece or just a, uh, uh, a connoisseur of high-end folding knives, I think there's a lot to enjoy with the Rubicon. I'm glad I got to check it out, and I definitely recommend it if you're a big Spyderco fan or a fan of high-end production knives. So that's the review, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Again, this is Dan for BladeReviews.com. Take care, and I'll be back soon with another knife review.